All right, my name is Gabriel Goldstein, and I'm a computer engineer. We're going to start this off with a little uh, video. <coughs> He's not like other kids. What do you mean? Yesterday, I left him alone for a minute, and he disassembled the TV, our clock, and the stereo. That's perfectly normal. Kids take things apart. Oh! The part that worries me is he used the components to build a ham radio set. Oh, dear. Is that bad? Normally, I'd want to run an EEG on, but the machine isn't working. What is it? I'm afraid your son has the knack. The knack? The knack. It's a rare condition characterized by an extreme intuition about all things mechanical and electrical and utter social ineptitude. Can he lead a normal life? No. He'll be an engineer. Plaza, um, an office up there. We're your Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering from the University of Central Florida. Um, I'm married with two kids. <laughs> Tess, hey, Spark. One more? Yeah. Uh, engineering is a science skill profession of acquiring and applying scientific, economic, and social and practical knowledge in order to design and also build structures, machines, devices, systems, materials, and processes. Basically, we take a bunch of information, world around us, and assemble things together to make products and things for you guys to, to use and, and have. Whether it be electronic, this table, plastic bins, whatever, whatever you got. Uh, we are very good at figuring out how things work, and uh, you know, really is having a, a, a good base of science and math to really um, understand the world around us. All right, so computer engineering is a merge of electrical engineering and computer science. Electrical engineering uh, is basically all electronics, basically. Uh, you have your power electronics, and you have all these really just completely electronic type things. And then you have computer science, which is all uh, programming. Well, it's a four-year degree, although most people do it in five, including myself. Um, it's challenging. There's lots of math involved. It's great because it's uh, very hands-on. You'll have the labs where you actually have to build stuff and make things happen in the labs. Um, you are basically your job as computer engineers to build electronics and software and put them all together because nowadays almost everything is a merge of software and hardware, meaning electronics. Um, that's right. Um, electronics, uh, examples of electronics that you're probably familiar with is your iPhone, your Xbox, your PS3, digital wristwatches. Um, keyless entry for your cars, all these things are electronics and they have uh, firmware or software in them to make things, uh, make them operate the way they do and computer engineers make that happen. Uh, we are cre we uh, create and assemble circuits to achieve a task using electricity. So uh, you guys are doing electricity in your, uh, your science class, um, right now I guess you're doing stack electricity. <coughs> Once that electricity starts moving, it's just called the electricity. And we build these circuits that harness electricity and make it do useful things for us. Um, so what does a computer engineer do? I mentioned that we make circuit boards. Now there's a few things in front of you to play with. Um, those are circuit boards over there. You can pass them around. Um, uh, I built those uh, various times during my career. Um, this is a picture of a circuit board in, called the, in the software. You'll see a picture of this later that actually is how we design them. And then here's what a circuit board looks like once it's been manufactured. And this is a circuit. You can sit on here, it's in a loop. And we use these little symbols to help represent the different things going on. Um, also, uh, we select a lot of components. There's a lot of circuits that have already been designed for you know, dozens or you know, dozens of years. Uh, so, and they're called chips. So we'll put these little chips together and build bigger circuits by assembling, um, assembling these, these chips. And there's also an architecture of systems where if you're the guy who um, 
understands the big project, you can be actually uh, orchestrate a number of smaller uh, other guys to do smaller tasks in the project. And so when you're the architect, you kind of take the big big picture back and and uh, and put the whole thing together. And so I also mentioned programming firmware. Anyone here ever program anything? What have you programmed? Sorry. Okay. Sorry. What have you programmed? Anyway, who raised their hand for programming? So, okay. Anyway. So, yeah, uh, we, make, we, make, we can write programs uh, to control the hardware to make it do various things for us. So this is an example of something that I designed recently. Um, and this one here is actually, it's called a schematic. And this is a picture of what I want to build. This is, this is a, a logical representation, meaning it's very easy to look at what's connected, how it all works together. And this is a bunch of lights that light up a client's logo. So with here, the power comes in, just like your, your, from your uh, battery, per se. Uh, here's a, one of those chips I mentioned that have a lot of circuits inside of it. And then here's a bunch of LEDs in a row. You all know what LEDs are? Yeah. Right, yeah. excellent. And so this, will, this circuit here will add 21 LEDs. And this circuit over here is the power supply for it, where special power comes in here. It gets filtered and cleaned up from protection circuits over here. And then this powers the rest of the LEDs up here. So this is, like I said, this is logical. This is a very easy to look at and debug and look at. So this is a physical representation. Physical meaning that it's holding your hands and this is what you want to fill. So you remember those big long strings you saw up top in the previous slide. This is the big long string. This is how it actually looks physically on the board. So you go, you have a little piece of wire here, the LED, wire, LED, just like you did on the other board. And then the other support circuits you saw the, are like right here and here and Here's the power supply section you saw over there. And so once you have this, this here, you actually can get a physical board made. And those, some of you have physical boards, you can just swap them at different tables so they all get a chance to look at them. Wow. Next slide. And this is a 3D rendering of what this board will look like. Now uh, here, they have red LEDs, well, so it's blue, but um, this is what the board's gonna look like when you actually hold it in your hand. Uh, so the other side of computer engineering is the software or the firmware. So on a PC, you have software. Yeah, it's very um, software mean It's not really, um, it's not physical. It's uh, you can change it around easily. You can you can load Excel. You can stop Excel. You can you know load Word, do whatever you saw Google Chrome. Um, firmware is in the middle between software and hardware. Because software is very transient, meaning it can come it can come and go very easily. Where in hardware is physical, you really can't do a whole lot with it once it's made. But firmware is software that runs on hardware, and it's usually not changed very often. And it's usually stored in chips that look like this, or some of those other chips you have um, on the, so the circuits there on the, uh, the table. Um, you can, that's where the, the, it's chained, it's stored. Uh, it's, like I said, it's rarely changed, and it's a software that's inside your PS3 or your wristwatch. You know, all these things in, inside, like, you know, these little devices, there's actually software computers running inside there. So um, the benefits of being a computer engineer, it's, a, it's very rewarding to see the things you build to create in the world. Um, one of my favorite things to do is go into a factory where they're building something that I developed and to see like a hundred of something you made just getting made. You know, to, to, to see the repetition of it, it's, it's, very, um, it's, it's very, very powerful, very interesting to, uh, to see and it gives you a lot of uh, sense of accomplishment. Um, so, and also you're building things that can be used by people and, and things that can be used to help people. So, you know, if it's a heart rate monitor, or it's a, um, uh, you know, some sort of other medical device type thing, you know, that can be helping people. Uh, also, you're helping entrepreneurs. You know, a guy comes up with a new idea for a product, like some of these things you have, I have out here, you know, you're helping them, you know, make money. Um, now, I would never recommend you go into a career because of pay, but engineering, you make a pretty good, pretty good living. Um, you can start around $50,000 a year, and you can make anywhere from $100,000 to $200,000 in the next five to 10 years after what you get good at uh, you know, honing your craft and getting good at what you do. Uh, it's pretty safe in general, but you can get shocked. Most of the stuff you'll deal with in here, you know, in school, will be anywhere between like, you know, one and a half to, uh, to 12 volts. I'm sure you've all put your time to a 12 volt, 9 volt battery at some point in time. That's, that's getting shocked. Um, 
That's not going to kill you. It's not going to feel, feel great. But uh, the stuff that comes out of the wall that you know, all your appliances are on is 110 volts, and that will kill you. It will hurt. It's not good. You want to get shocked? She's been shocked. All right, good. All right. Um, also, field work, you know, sometimes uh, when you build something, it doesn't always work the first time. And let's say you build something that works on, like, a jet fighter. You know, there's lots of computers on jet fighters. Um, you know, they, uh, sometimes you have to go into the field to, you know, fix something that only doesn't work at the, uh, on, the, uh, on, the, on the jet fighter. So you might be on a runway, not the safest place in the world. Um, the biggest hazard of being an engineer is weight gain because you're a desk jockey. You pretty much sit in front of a computer screen for eight to ten hours a day. Um, it's pretty sedentary uh, as far as, you know, a, a job goes, but, um, you know, you just have to you know, make efforts to, to combat that. Um, when you hit about 27, 28, you'll notice a big change happens in your life. Okay, uh, why would you choose to be an engineer? Well, engineering chose me. I always was one at ages three, four, five. I was like, taking things apart. Seven, eight, nine, I was putting them back together again. I have the knack, as you saw in the video. Uh, if you have the knack, you probably want to be an engineer. Um, so, and so it's also really important to do what you love. You know, I, I really do enjoy building things, making things work. Um, and it, it goes beyond computer stuff. Like, I like doing a lot of mechanical work. I like building things, working on my hands, um, stuff like that. So it, it, all, it all goes together. Um, so if you like taking things apart and learning how things work, you might be an engineer. All the stuff around you just didn't happen. Any piece of plastic you see, it costs a lot of money to build that piece of plastic. It's, um, so, you know, there's, engineering goes into everything. The tables, the chairs, the plastic bins, um, the projector, the screen. Engineers put all that stuff together. So if you like building and creating and designing things, engineering might be for you. If you like building houses, then you're an architect. That's basically the only difference. Um, uh, so you wouldn't really have anything very interesting around you. Engineers invented the wheel. I mean, that's kind of the way, way uh, it goes. Um, so we create your Xboxes, computers, alarm systems, microwave ovens, radios. It's really important to be, realize that even though the term computer is attached to this field, it's, it's rarely and more often than uh, less than not, it's not the computer you set on your desk. There are 10, 10 times, 100 times more computers that are in devices like this. There's a computer in here what? that they exist like this. Your iPhone is a computer. This little thing is a computer. All the things you see on your desk have, all that have been passed around have computers on them. And they have firmware. And it's, computers are, the, the, what happened is, you know, for 30 years ago, the computers were being created. They took small little computers and put, made, made it into a personal computer. So when you see the term computer, you got to think, you know, not, it's really a personal computer sitting on your desk. Or a PC or a Mac, um, not the computers that are really everywhere else in the world. Your remote control. I mean, everything has a computer in it these days. Um, but basically, an engineer, if you have the ability to really stick to it and solve problems, and uh, you know, uh, you like really getting into things, um, that makes a good engineer. You know, being detail-oriented can be good sometimes. Uh, other times, it's really good to you know, take a step back and. And uh, HR architect things you can't get bogged down in the details. Um, if you like to think and solve problems, if you just, you know, not necessarily Rubik's Cube stuff, but if you know what that is. Um, okay, good. Um, the, uh, but, it, you know, it's, it's solving problems, like, you know, almost, you know, it, it, a lot of it goes hand in hand. Um, one of the best things I can tell you to do is take a personality test. You'll get tested all through your high school and middle school career, different tests, but. One you can do right now for free online is called either Myers Briggs or Tiercy, and it'll um, categorize your personality in one of 16 types. And it'll give you ideas which you're going to be good at doing based on the kind of person you are by answering these questions. And engineers fall into this um, category called either scientist or the mastermind, depending on how you, which test you take. Um, some resources I want to introduce you to, one's called Arduino. If you want to program and you like doing things that are programming but not on a PC, Arduino is a little kit you can buy, and you can program it to do whatever you want, flash lights, buzzers, motors, build robots out of it. There's a ton of stuff if you uh, either Google Arduino or whatever else. Also, the Internet, I'm sure you guys have realized that the Internet has everything in the world on it. 
There are lots of engineers who've made web pages to teach you all about engineering. Um, there's a personality link which I'll email you if you uh, ask for it. Next page. Um, I'm Gabriel Goldstein. You can email me there. I have cards here you can uh, uh, take home uh, and, and write me if you need to. And uh, I'll take some questions. Yeah. Did you create, a, create an Xbox? I did not create an Xbox. An X, something to create like an Xbox probably takes in the order of um, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollars and probably a team of about 30 guys. Yes. What did you create? Okay, I'll show you a few things I've made here. These are a few final products. This here is a GPS golf device. It's a computer. This is basically an iPod Touch, but I built it eight years ago. And it has GPS in it, and it has a radio. And when it's on the golfer's um, uh, caddy, they can touch the screen and tell them how far away they are from the hole. So I know you guys don't golf, but... I do. I golf. I do. Okay, I spoke too soon. So this will tell you how far away you are from the hole. This was, you know, eight years ago before the whole market changed, but... That is a, one of my uh, earlier products. This here is a really interesting product. It's really hard to explain, but it's called reverse engineering. Engineering is usually the process of taking nothing and they create something useful out of it. Well, what happened with this one is I had to figure out how something worked, and that's called reverse engineering. So I figured out how someone else's end cap worked. This goes on paper, and then I made a client a new one by figuring out how the old one worked. Yes? I've been an engineer for 25 years, if you count when I started when I was five. I got my degree in 2000, and I've had my own company for 11 years. So I've been, I've been working as an engineer for, I think, about 15 years. Yes? What is your company? It's called Anidia Engineering. You can take a card. Yes, Tiana? Okay. No? One. Yes. Is that a fun job? I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, my job has changed um, over the last ten years. I used to be completely, like I mentioned, how I was the, the details. I used to do everything A to Z. Now, since I've been doing it for a long time, I now have guys who do a lot more of the details for me. So I've I've kept it fun because, quite honestly, you can burn out being an engineer. It's, it's, it's kind of an intense job. And it's good to take breaks and you know do other things within your skill set. So now what I do actually now is a lot of time I do the architecture side of things. So I'm changing my job within my job. Anyone else? Well, thank you very much. I had a lot of fun today uh, talking to your class and uh, the other ones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.